One common question about the increasing levels of CO2 in the general environment is that if CO2 is a limiting factor on plant growth, why, if there's suddenly an excess of CO2 in the atmosphere, don't the plants use up this excess until the original level of CO2 in the environment is actually restored? Well, there's a lot of logic behind this question. It's actually related to something called the Gaia hypothesis. In general, the hypothesis was introduced by James Lovelock, though elements of the general idea behind it have been around for thousands of years before that. What the Gaia hypothesis envisages is the whole Earth as a self-regulating system, where if you change one element in the Earth system, other elements change a result, bringing the Earth back into balance where it was before the change was actually made. Certain elements of this can be seen in many systems. However, some are quite complicated since they have a lot of variable factors and it becomes sometimes difficult to see all the changes and consequences. However, there is one relatively easy example and that is of the Canadian lynx and the snowshoe hare. These two animals have a very close relationship with each other in that the chief food of the lynx is the hare and that has a direct influence on the populations of both lynx and hare. If the conditions mean that, say, there's more food available for the hare, then the hare numbers increase. This means that there's more hares available for the lynxes to eat and then with a little lag the lynx numbers also increase. After a while, the excess food for the hares is eaten and their numbers become limited both by the shortage of food and by the increasing numbers of lynxes as predators. The number of hares then decline. But this also means then there's less food for the lynxes to actually eat and some of them starve. This rebalancing the numbers of predator and prey continues until the original balance is actually restored again. This, in general, is the Gaia hypothesis in action as a natural self-balancing system. What then would happen if the numbers of hares crashed to such a low level that all of the lynxes starved? Hare numbers would then explode and the only limiting factor would be the food that the hares might actually then damage the environment to such an extent where they cause other environmental changes as they eat everything that's possible to eat in their environment. This is what's thought of as a tipping point where the environmental conditions are changed to such an extent that the system is incapable of restoring the balance at least in the foreseeable future. Now because the change in CO2 levels is thought to be so considerable some scientists believe that we're already approaching or have actually passed an environmental tipping point as far as CO2 is actually concerned. This is why it's sometimes referred to as runaway climate change, where some of the environmental factors, rather than rebalancing the system, then progress to make the system actually worse than it was before. For example, increased CO2 levels may create more acidic oceans as the CO2 dissolves in the water, which may damage plant life in the ocean. Also, CO2 in the upper atmosphere traps additional heat in our atmosphere, warming up the planet, increasing the size of the deserts, melting the polar ice caps and rising sea levels generally all mean that there's less area of suitable land for plants to actually grow in. These effects are some of the possible changes that an excess of CO2 in the atmosphere may bring about which might be difficult to actually counter. So in summary, small change in the CO2 levels can be rebalanced by additional plant growth However, it's possible that the growth in CO2 levels have gone beyond this rebalancing level.